Okay. Here we go. Difference of perfect squares. How do we do these? Same thing. I've given you the rule. Oi. Start running. Write my notes. Copy my notes. Here you go. Difference of perfect squares. I've given you the rule. I've given you the rule here. Your aim when you're factorizing is you want to get something squared minus something squared. That's your goal. Okay? Right now we don't have that. So if you have a look at it right now, we've got 5x all squared then minus 9. That's not the same as what we have there. We want something squared minus something squared. So the issue is the 5. Now how do you do it? The technique I'm going to teach you guys is you square root them. Okay, if you want to find out, square root it. Square root of 9 gives me 3. So it becomes 3 squared. Yeah, 3 squared is 9. Same thing. Same thing with 5x squared. If you don't know what should go in the sort of what should you square, square root it. So this will be root of 5. So you get root of 5. And square root of x squared gives you x. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. I'm just writing them into their brackets so I can use this formula up here. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm just square rooting them. I'm square rooting the 5, which I don't know, so I write root 5. I know the square root of an x squared. The square and the square root cancels out. That's why I've got x. Okay, so this is nice now because if I square them, square of root 5 should give me 5, and square of x should give me x squared. That's what we want. Yeah, so I haven't changed the equation. I've just changed the way it looks. Now, it's subtract. Now, if I'm going to use the rule, the rule says if you have a and you have b, which I'm going to highlight here so you can see, this is my a. That's my A. That's my A there. See, that's my A right over here. This is my B. This is my B over here. So according to the rule, I can have A minus B and A plus B. So I'm going to write that down. You're going to copy exactly what they had written there. You'll say, all right, so this is my A. This is my B. So if I follow that formula, the answer should be root of 5x and it says here, minus b over here, so I'm going to minus my b, which is 3. And then I have root of 5x again, that's my a. It says here, a plus b. So I'm going to copy that, I'm going to write, all right, plus b, which is my 3. Done. That's called factorizing. And you're factorizing into two brackets, and I've used difference of perfect squares. How did I get the 3? I square root the 9. How did I get root 5x? I square root 5 and I square root x squared. Yeah? Now even in this third or second problem here, it looks complicated, but it's the same technique. I want to show you. You see, right now, you don't have to think about anything, because it's already squared. It's x, plus, x minus 2 squared minus 2x plus 1 squared. There's no need to do anything now. You don't have to square root anything, because you can see that's my squared minus something squared. So if I highlight for you to see what's my aim, what's my being, Right here, this is my A. True? Something squared. That's my A. This is my B. I'm going to write underneath so you can see. I'm going to write in red. This is my A. This is my B. Yeah, because I'm just saying something squared minus something squared. You can have anything in there. You can have a smiley face if you wanted to. And then you could have a cross. So if you use the difference of perfect squares, it'd be A minus b, and then a plus b. That's all it is. And yeah, it's the same thing. It will be smiley face minus plus, and then smiley face plus the cross. That's what difference of perfect squares is. You just need something squared minus something squared. Yeah? So, in this example here, because it's already squared, you can see it's already something squared minus something squared. Your answer you just follow with the formula. They say a minus b and then times a plus b. So if you follow that, my a has to be x minus 2. Minus my b has to be 2x plus 1. And then in my second one, a again is x minus 2. And my b is 2x plus 1. See, I'm just following it. But what mistake have I made already? Because this is the common mistake a lot of students make. Where's my mistake? I've done something wrong already. Where have I gone wrong? Can someone tell me what have I done wrong? Yes, Yasmin. 
Yeah. See, a lot of the times my students, this is where you can tell and what I mean by telling how your working solutions tells me how well you're going to do mathematically for next year. So right here, your notations from year 7 to 9 and 10, I can tell how well your negatives were. So right here, we said it's A minus B. So you're right, this is my A. So I'm going to write underneath it. I'm going to do it in red. This is my A. That's true. That's a minus. And yes, this is B. But remember, B has two terms. This has two terms. It has 2x and a plus 1. So not only are you subtracting 2x, you're also subtracting the 1. Now, a better notation is you're meant to write it brackets. That way you won't forget. Okay, because if you don't do that, most likely your answer is going to be negative 2 plus 1 instead of negative 2 minus 1. Okay, so that's the only mistake you make there. But otherwise, if you're going to answer the question now, it's pretty easy. So you got x minus 2 minus 2x minus 1, and you've got x minus 2 plus 2x plus 1. Simplify it. Here we go. This now gives me x minus 2x. What's x minus 2x? Not x. Negative x. x minus 2. So 1 minus 2. Negative x. Now I've got minus 2 minus 1. What's minus 2 minus 1? Hamish. Minus 2 minus 1. Negative 2 minus 1. No. We were talking about this just now. If you owe me $2. Oh, right. Okay, let's have a look. Negative numbers. All right. One. No. 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 Let's let's go. No, no. It's just. It's the direction. Now let's think about it. Negative three. Yeah. Oh my god. That was pretty bad. Negative three. Now I'm gonna watch out for your negatives when you do your test. All right. You got negative x minus three. Next one. Same thing. X. That's a plus 2x, so x plus 2x is? 3x. 3x. Then you go to the constants, negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. Negative 1. We're going to work with negatives, okay? We'll work in negatives. I'm going to come over later. But here we go. This is your answer for this question. If you were to factorize it, it simplifies to this. So the question is, what was difficult about it? It wasn't anything difficult. Algebraically, it looks complicated, but technique-wise, I was just following the same formula. A squared minus B squared equals to A minus B, A plus B. That's it. A minus B, A plus B. And I just followed on. Okay? Now, if you keep that in mind, and you sort of picture all that, what I'm trying to teach you, then you should be able to do this third one. Okay? Because every time I put it in the sack, a lot of kids can't do this one, and it just goes back to, did they do exercise the second exercise, 9b? Yeah? I mean 3b. So here we go. This is what I want you to look at. Try that one. It's in your examples in your textbook. But I want you to try this one. Same thing. Same drill. Whatever technique I've just given you here. Same formulas up here. Don't get with this one. Because I am going to put something like that on the set. And if you can't do this one, I'm doing the video on it as well, and it's going to be on the quizzes. And if you still can't do that, then it just goes back on you, yeah? I'm doing my best to show you this example. Come all the time. Exam, sometimes they, the teachers chuck that in as well. A difference is perfect squares problem. So copy that example down. Try this one. Minus y squared minus 16 y squared. I want to use difference of perfect squares. Meantime, I'm going to hand this out. Just in case you guys haven't been Finn, 
Put it away, please. Otherwise, I'll put it in my pocket and you can get it in a session. <coughs> Is sixteen? Yeah, that's negative sixteen y squared. <coughs> but when you want to make it in a perfect square, then you only focus on sixteen y squared. <coughs> Because you wanted the minus. 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 Oh, right. Minus. Yeah. Minus. You want to keep it minus. It's the first step. Hands up if you got the first step. I get this. You didn't have to do anything for the first one because it was already something squared. You didn't have to change it. It's x minus y, that's your a, it's squared. The only thing you have to change is 16. Yeah, because it's y squared, but you need both of them to be squared. So, square root them. Square root of 16 is 4, square root of y squared is y. So now if you try to expand that, square root of 4 is 16, square root of y gives you y squared. So now I can use the formula. a is squared, Minus, minus, B. Oh, yeah. Same thing, I'm just keeping the same format. I'm not changing anything, I'm keeping the same format. Yeah? Because once you have that, it's pretty easy. You've got your A minus B. Here we go. A minus B. A plus B. I'm just following the same rule. Nothing different. It might look different. But it's the same thing. A minus B. A minus B. A plus B. Simplify it. Hands up if you got this correct. Fantastic. Hands up if you got the idea, but you got the negatives wrong. Why are you being so All right, cool. I need the idea first. The negatives, you can work on that afterwards, yeah? But you need the idea. Without the idea, there's no point. All right? Okay, next one. Make sure to copy that. All the PowerPoint's up there. You can always copy it down from there. Yeah? Here we go. Now, let's go back to... Let's go back to what you learnt in year 9, year 10. If I taught you in year 9, I would have told you... And this is the first thing you learn in year 11. I said, it's the biggest part. If you don't get it, then you have two years to figure it out, right? For those who totally forgot how to factorize this, there was a couple of methods that um, was taught. And this is one of the ones I taught back in year 9. You write down, because of the x squared, you write down the first term. You write the constant, minus 8, in the middle. And your aim is to get negative 2x. So now what you do is you ask yourselves, what are the factors of x squared? Now factors means something times itself to give you that number, yeah? So factors of 6, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 6, 6. That's why those are the factors. So x squared, what are my factors of x squared? Yes, Will? Factors of x squared? x times x. Okay, simple and easy. Factors of x squared is just x times x, yeah? 1x times 1x. Next one. Factors of negative 8. Now, don't worry about the negative for now. Just look at the 8. Factors of 8, Najma? 1 times 8. So I got 1. I've got 8. What else do I have? 1 and 8. Hamish? 4 and 2. Now, in this case here, once you list out the factors, you've got 1, 8, 4, 2. Then you do what we call the cross method. Back in you know, we're trying to do the cross method. So we're going to do a cross. And so we're going to test it out. We're going to say, all right, what if I cross these two? What it means when you're crossing those two, it means as 8 times x, okay, or x times 8. So if you think about it, x times 8, what's x times 8? x times 8, 8x. 8x. Okay, so I'm going to write it down. I've got 8x. And then x times 1. What's x times 1? x. I got 1x. Now your question is 1x and 8x, is there any way to get negative 2x? No, because 8 and 1 is too far. If I did 8 plus 1, I get 9. If I did 8 minus 1, I get 7. There's no way I'm going to get a 2. So I know this pair doesn't work. So I try another one. 
So back in year nine, that's why it was important to try to master it because you're going to keep trial and error until you get really fast at it. And then you can pick it out and you can say, well, maybe it's these two. Maybe you're pairing it up with x and 4 and x and 2. Now, if you pair it up with x and 4 and x and 2, this is what you get. x times 2, 2x. x times 4, 4x. Now you ask yourselves, with the negatives, you ask yourselves, how do I get a 4 and a 2 to get a negative 2? How do you get the negative 2? What do you do? Akita. Negative. Negative. Now I want I want to add or subtract. How do I get that? Thank you. That's why I wanted to hear. So you're going to say it's a positive. This is a negative four, and you add the two, yeah, or two minus four. So this is where you have to work out two. If you think about your number line, if I draw a number line for you to see, no, because if you had four. 4 is over here, so that's a positive 4. So if you had... 4 minus 2. Yeah, see, 4 minus 2. Minus means you're going this way. See, that's 2. That's minus 2. But if you're starting at negative 4, and you add 2, you end up at negative 2. Yeah? So that's why you know, now I'm going to write here, you know it has to be... You know it has to be a negative 4 and a plus 2. So how do you get a negative 4 and how do you get a positive 2? That has to be a negative. This has to be a positive. So write out your answer. So we're going to do this. We're going to say, all right, we know this has to be a negative. This is a positive. Therefore, the answer will I'm assuming you know this, hence why you're talking. Okay, good. Because when I check you and if you screw up on any of these, I'm going to remind you of this day. Yeah? I will remind you all. Anyway, here we go. I do want to explain this because every year I still go through all this. And I know you're meant to know in year 9, but I promise you not all of you do know. And that's why I go through it. And I know some of you are bored by it, but at the same time, some of you are bored because you don't know it too. And it's like, well, you learnt it in year nine. You had two years to master it. In year 10, not all students get 100% on the quadratics. Quadratics is one of the biggest parts, and you guys fail on this. And it happens year 11, year 12. We know over the last three years, it's just been declining. The number of students who are able to factorize a quadratic like this is declining. So that's why I'm going through it. I don't want to make the assumption that you all can do it. It would be great if I can do that, and if I can just come in and say, factorize this. The answer has to be x minus 4 and x plus 2. And some of you will go, what did he just do? Yeah, and I don't want that. Because by the end of this course, you have to be able to do that instantaneously. Yeah, so in the first, <coughs> first um, probably six, seven exercises, you should, have, you should be revising year 9, year 10 work. After that, it skyrockets in difficulty. So if you can't get this basic stuff, when I teach you that next part of the second half of year 11, you won't be able to follow me. Yeah, so I'm really trying to tell you, please, if you know this, great, work on that. That's exercise 3B, yeah? But if you don't know it, please copy it down and try to learn it because it's not going to get easier. It's only going to get harder from here, yeah? You had two years. That's, that's why it's getting harder. It's not like it's suddenly put on upon you guys. You've seen this before. It's whether you've been working on it for the last two years, okay? So here we go. The answer, as I said, if you know that that's a minus, minus 4x, then this is a minus, and that's a plus. So your answer should be, and I'm going to write it over here, you should have this is equal to x minus 4. That's your top row, x minus 4. And then your next answer is x plus 2. Obviously, in year 11, the expectation is you don't have to do what I've just shown you. Next time I give you that type of equation, you should just be able to tell me it's x minus 4, x plus 2. So when I move on to the next example, you should just be able to look at that and tell me what the pairs are. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're still struggling, then the technique I just ta taught you, you can use it for this one. But ideally, I want in the next six sessions or so, you should be able to do this in your head. So you should be able to write out what the answer is. Anyone happen to know what the answer is? Yes, Akita. Uh, you just six out of a common factor. Three. Three. Three can't go into thirteen. No. 
Three can't go to 13. What is the answer? Can anyone do in their head? I'll tell you. Break. Oh, yeah, you do. Um, put 6x in the beginning of the first bracket. Yep. And then put negative uh, 3 at the far side of the bracket. No, no, on the other bracket. And then put uh, positive 5 next to 6. And then put x. All right, let's test this. 6x times negative 3 gives me minus 18x. 5 times x is plus 5x. So let's check if that gives you negative 13. Negative 18 plus 5x. Yes, this does give you the negative 13x, which we want. Great. Let's double check. 6x times 6x. I mean, 6x times x. Yes, it does give you 6x squared. And then finally, it does 5 times negative 3 give you negative 15. Yes. So therefore, this is what I'm saying. So... What you learnt in the technique that I showed whoops that I showed you in the previous slide is all you're doing. The question is, how fast are you at it? There's a lot of trial and error in your head you gotta work with. Now, same thing, we follow the same technique. The problem with this one, why it gets harder compared to the last slide, is because with six factor of six x squared, you can have one x squared, six I mean one x times six x. Or you could have two x. 3x. So there's double the number of trials that you got to work with. That's why it's harder to see it in your head. Yeah? Then factors of 15, you've got 3 and 5, 1 and 15. So normally, you don't have that extra pile. You just do 1 with 15, 6 with that. So 6 and 15 doesn't work. You're like, no, nah, can't do it. So you might try 6 and 3, 1 and 5, and it so happens that it works. But you see, if, you, if you're doing it in your head, the question is, can you do that quickly in your head? That's what the two years was meant to be designed for since year 9, year 10, was to consolidate how fast can you do that in your head. It's like your times tables. When you learnt in primary school, by the time you get to year 7, the expectation is if I said 3 times 8, you should be like that. You shouldn't be like, uh, and take your time. Now, it's the same thing in year 11. The expectation is, we'll give you this. You should be able to just look at it and go, oh, maybe this is the right answer. So that's what I'm saying. If you're slow at this, work on it. Over time, the more practice you do, the faster you get it. There's no other way around it. You had two years to do it, and year 11 is even shorter time now. You only got six sessions to really get your head around it by the time you get to applications. Yeah? So that's what I want. Write it down. So what you can see here, we can see that if we paired 1x with a 5, 6x with a 3, you get 18x and you get 5x. Same questions. You ask yourself, how do I get 18 and 5? Let's get negative 13. Shh. Negative 18 and a positive 5, so that means this has to be a negative 3 and a positive 5. That's why the answer is, and I'm going to highlight it again, 1x with a plus 5, okay? And then 6x with the minus 3, okay? Because you get the positive 5 there, 6 times negative 3, yeah? Which is, so if you look at the top row, you can see the top row is 1x minus 3, which is what this is, 1x minus 3 and 6x plus 5, and that's how Seb got their answer, okay? But that's the technique, that's what I wanted to teach. So what was in this session today? The difference of perfect squares, okay? And the second one is factorizing trinomials, but you have to get fast at this. Those two skills, if you don't have that, by the time you get to 3f, 3g, I mean 3, yeah, 3e and 3f, you find it very difficult to sketch graphs, to factorize and solve, all of that will be very difficult. You can't find x-axis intercepts, you can find y, but then you'll find it hard to do turning point, and hence you can't analyze graphs for afterwards, in equations and discriminants, yeah? So you have to get this one down. 9a, I mean 3a to 3e, you have to get it through your head. If you don't have that, you're gonna find it very hard. It's 3b, okay? Work on 3b, please. I know we've got uh, about, probably about eight minutes left, but just have a look at 3b, that's your homework. 3b, 3c's next session, okay? Wait. Let me just stop the video.